We are back home again, friendly confines, and excited to, to be back home, playing a game that uh, is always fiercely contested. It should be a festive atmosphere with a lot of energy in the building. And we're playing a team that's good. We're playing a team that returns four starters from a squad that had the ball down one and missed a wide open three at the end of the game a year ago. They have a dynamic guard combination and others are significantly better. So uh, we anticipate a hard fought, very good basketball game. Our, our guys are excited and we will be ready to play and I'm sure USD will also. Uh, so I will entertain any questions. Coach, there was a photo of you and the team following the last game in Maui against Arizona. I believe the only people that were really smiling were you and, and Zyland. What's the message to your team after kind of a loss like that, given the setting and the kind of just overall, all the ceremonial stuff? I, I haven't seen any photos from post, uh, post game. Uh, and if I was smiling, it was a forced smile. Uh, so the winners, uh, the winners smile and celebrate, and the losers say, deal the next hand, play the next game. So. We were uh, proud with uh, how we competed, disappointed at the, at the final outcome in the Arizona game, but felt as if we had growth in a lot of ways in that event, found out more about ourselves, and it served a great purpose for us. So as much as we wanted to win three games, tremendous value from the experience. Coach, you mentioned last year's uh, last second shot at Jenny Craig Pavilion. I remember you saying last year that you thought it was going to go in when you first saw it shot. You thought it was going in. Um, but sort of, I kind of asked the players, sort of talk about SDSU has a definite rivalry with USD just because it's, you know, an inner city rivalry. Um, but it doesn't get the same attention as possibly with UNLV or UNM or maybe Arizona now. So just in your experience as SDSU's coach, sort of talk about that, the rivalry between uh, these two schools, what you've seen. It will get a lot of attention. Uh tomorrow locally and these are games that uh, that we want to win I mean these are important games for both sides so uh, we were the whipping boy my first three years here they used used us as fodder for their own league and and we've been successful lately so uh, we uh, we like they look forward to uh, to, uh, I'm sure, a fiercely fought game tomorrow. And uh, it's any game, things happen. Things happen in every game. It doesn't have to be a team across town that you're playing. Uh, so our goal is to play as hard as we can. And then everything else takes care of itself. You play hard, you play with great energy and intelligence. Now you gotta combine the intellect part of it. Then you have a chance to be successful. And we've played pretty hard most of the time. Coach, in the, in the last um, couple of games in, in Maui, your rebounding numbers uh, appear to drop a little bit. And that's always been something that, that's been a mainstay in this program. Is that sort of like shooting percentages and, and goes up and down? Or is it a genuine cause for concern and focus uh, in practice? We have to rebound the ball better. There's no question about it. Uh, we're giving up 16, we were giving up going into that event, 16 offensive rebounds a game. And I don't think it changed much in, in Maui. We have to do a better job rebounding at, at both ends of the floor. It's like, it, it semi negates a turnover when you get second and third opportunities. And we have one of our, one of our goals that's often on our keys to success is rebound 50% of your misses at our end and limit them to a, a, a percentage somewhere in the 25% range. And we've not done a good enough job on that. And that, that has hurt us. So we, we must get better at rebounding. And we're big enough, athletic enough, where we should be better. And I look around and I say, where's Josh Davis? Because he got a lot of those for us last year. So we need guys that will go in. We need guards that will pick up balls that bounce and hit the floor. 
We need five people there. At the defensive end, you can't be leaning the other way and assume that Skyler's going to get it or someone else is going to get it. Uh, so we made that a point of emphasis. We showed tape where we showed ourselves uh, getting beat up on the offensive glass or the opponent's offensive glass. And that's an area that uh, our, our weaknesses showed in that tournament, in all three games, really. You said that you look around and say, where's Josh Davis? Do you think the players have done that a little bit? And players returning from last year so used to him just getting everything that's an adjustment to, to them having to chase. I would hope not. I would hope not. Uh, uh, I, I think that guys just have to say, I have to, I have to do my job. Our quote yesterday was, uh, there are no gray areas. Know your job, do your job. There are not, no gray areas. Know your job, do your job. And at the defensive end, when we're defending, everybody says we're a really good defensive team. Well, rebounding is a big part of your defense. So we probably would not be quite as good as some people want to say we are defensively because we don't rebound well enough defensively. And we've talked on it. And that's something that, uh, that you want to get into their heads, unlike offense where, you know, when you're not making shots and the more you talk about it, sometimes the harder it gets to make a shot. In this area, you have to, you have to rebound the ball. And, I mean, we talked. We said the only, the only area you can be selfish in is rebounding. Go get the ball.